Hi, my name is JC. Last week I posted a video showing how premium subscribers can make some simple customizations to the stitch maps that they've exported from stitchmaps.com. This week I want to go a step further and play with color. There are any number of reasons why you might want to do this, but one common example, the one I'm going to go through today, is if you have a stitch map that shows the shaping for a piece and you want to plan the color work that will fill in that, that space. The example that I have here is the crown of a hat. We have one, two repeats of the hat shaping. In each repeat, double decreases on every other round reduce the number of stitches in the hat. But as yet, there's no color. And other examples along these lines would be the shaping for a mitten hand or for a yoked sweater. Again, anytime you want to plan the color work that will go into a shape space. You can see that I've already modified this stitch map as I described last week. I've created a series of named groups for the symbols, the row numbers, and the all important polygons where the color is going to go. This makes it a lot easier to edit portions of the, the stitch map without changing things that I don't want to fool around with. The first thing I want to do in this case, because the, the end goal is to create something that shows color primarily, I want to turn this into a blank slate. I want to create a space in which to fill the, the color. The polygons themselves are normally filled with white and with no fill. So on a white background, they're not visible really. I'm going to change that. I'm going to change the stroke for each of these and I'm going to change it to a shade of gray and also make those a little bit narrower. So now I have boxes like you would see in a grid-based chart, although these boxes are also showing exactly what shaping is going on. The stitch map is looking a little cluttered though, and so I want to hide the, the knit stitches, leaving the decrease symbols that show where and how the decreasing should take place. To make that happen, first I'm just going to temporarily hide those polygons, get them out of my way, and I'm going to unlock the symbols by selecting all of the decrease symbols, what I can do is then create the group containing the decreases and another group, subgroup, containing the knits. Now this part, I admit, is a little bit tedious. You're going to watch me hold down the shift key and select each of these symbols. But it's all part of the organization that, like I was suggesting earlier, makes it a lot easier to then edit things later. I've created a group containing those decreases, so I'm going to name that group. And now I'm going to add the other decrease symbols into that group. Again, selecting them by holding down the shift key. Adding to my selection until I get to the bottom here. Almost there. And now I can add those selected symbols into my decreases group. Selecting all the other symbols, group them together. Those are my knits. So I can hide the knit symbols turn those polygons back on, and this is the, the blank slate that I was talking about earlier. At this point, you could color it in by printing it out on paper, and then use colored pencils or colored markers as you see fit. Some people like to work that way. Uh, perfectly acceptable. It's a lot of fun if you've got a lot of colored markers. And if you want to try out a bunch of variations side by side, just simply print out multiple copies. We're going to continue playing an illustrator today. And I want to use this green color as my fill. What I could do is just simply select individual polygons, again, using the group selection tool, select by holding on the shift key, and then clicking on the color that I want them to be. This is a little bit tedious, though. I think it's a lot faster and a lot more fun if you do this sort of thing using Illustrator's Live Paint tool. So to make that happen, I'm going to select all the polygons, go up to the Object menu, select Live Paint Make. 
now I can make use of the Live Paint Bucket tool and just simply hold down my mouse key as I indicate all of the stitches in this round ought to be that shade of green. Likewise, you can hold down here, color in all of these grid squares quickly and easily. And as far as I'm concerned, whenever it comes to quick and easy, that's when you've got greater opportunity for playing around, which is kind of the point. You can also just simply click with the Live Paint Bucket tool. And I'm going to click on each of the decrease symbols, every other stitch in this column, to indicate that those should be worked in that shade of green as well. If there's something that I accidentally made green that I wanted to be white, just change back to white and click again. So that's part of my patterning. I'm going to continue with green again and fill in a little bit more patterning here. I think you get to see the idea at this point by using this particular Illustrator tool I can create a stitch map that shows very clearly where the patterning ought to go and how it fills in that space and yet it looks more like the end result, more like the hat top that we're trying to create than a grid based chart would which kind of sort of always my goal to get things to look like the end result. So I'm not going to make you watch me finish this whole thing. I am going to pull the finished result out of a hat as it were. This is the stitch map that I was aiming to create. We can clearly see there's two repeats of pattern. We can see on what on what rounds and at what point the decreases should take place and we can see in what color every stitch ought to be. And I think this is a, a pretty nice way to go especially when we compare to the matching grid based chart. Bring that up in just a second here. If we compare these two with the stitch map we can see how this motif takes shape. It's kind of a kite shaped motif with the dots running up the middle. This grid based chart shows you exactly the same instructions but you can't quite see that shape. You can sort of imagine it but this shows it far more clearly, it gives you a better idea of what a section of the hat shaping is going to look like. So again my name is JC, this has been a short little instructional video on adding color to a stitch map in the particular case of trying to show color work and shaping in the in the same chart. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you've got any questions please feel free to join the Stitch Maps group on Ravelry and pose your questions there. I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.